For passengers who have just joined us, good day and can I remind you that while the bus is in motion, can you please keep to your seats? Thank you. with the royal wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton. We believe if they had not met here at St Andrews University, it may never have happened. I will show you some of their favourite places in the next hour. We are now heading for the golf courses on the A91, the main road out of the town for all major towns and cities. This used to be a lovely hotel named the Apple Hotel, taken over by the University in 1965. The round building on the left is the St Andrews Gateway. It was originally built to be an exclusive club for rich golfers and businessmen. The gateway cost 13 million to build, but didn't have the successful beginning that was hoped for due to the lack of interest from members. So this exclusive building closed its doors the same day it was opened and remained dormant for several years. St Andrews University now owned the building and purchased it at a bargain price of the building. The home of golf makes St Andrews what it is today. The old course coming up shortly hosts the record of hosting 28 of all the Open Championships ever held, making it the most popular course ever. It constantly proves to be a great benefit to the town, with well over 200,000 visitors making the journey to watch what is without a doubt the sport's most popular event. The last Open Championship was won by Louis Housthausen. 2007 was an exciting year for golf in St Andrews. It was the first time ever to host the Ladies Open, which was won by the 25-year-old Mexican Lorena Ochoa, and the 2013 winner was Stacey Lewis from America. The farmhouse on your next left was where Prince William spent his third and fourth year at university. This was to give him a wee bit more privacy. Ahead of you now is the St Andrews Lynx Golf Academy. The first building is for checking new golf equipment and new types of golf balls. Beyond is the new extended driving range, bunkers, pitching and putting area. For just over £3 you can have a large basket of golf balls which you can hit as hard as you like and not even worry about picking them up. A small tractor does this for you while providing excellent target practice. Did you know every morning 25,000 golf balls are washed and ready for use? the Stalking Bridge, which is nearly 900 years old, and the 18th Railway. St Andrews has long been called the home of golf due to the creation of the game here around 1350. May Queen of Scots played a very basic game here in 1567, and in 1754 the Society of Golfers was formed, which was later to become the Royal Nation Golf Club of St Andrews by William IV in 1834. The in 1993, the Balgrove, a great nine-hole course for beginners, and the Castle Coast, which we will see later on. This place is definitely a golfer's paradise. We are now travelling around to the 18th green.
dass der Auftrieb der Amsen. Sind dann löse, wie ein Wetterlacke, der hat Pops, der Lücke, der Enjoy, Good Food and Drink. Der Pop und der Wecht und der New End ist one of those, wo der Full Menu und der Lovely Beer Garden to enjoy the menu. the founders of this hotel discovered this breathtaking cliffs of location overlooking the legendary home of golf, they set out to create Scotland's finest resort destination. The resort opened in the summer of 2001 and is now part of the Fairmont Hotels and Resorts Group, the largest luxury hotel company in North America with a worldwide reputation for excellence and a portfolio which includes properties such as the Savoy in London and the Plaza in New York. We are now turning into Broomfalls Avenue, which takes its name from the priory acres on which it was built. St Andrews was not always a prosperous looking town. Only a couple of centuries ago, it was just a small grey town on the east coast which was not much cleaner or richer than anywhere else in Scotland. In 1844, there were many problems with the plumbing and sanitation, and no finances were available to improve the situation. That year, 300 people died from cholera. This was due to the dreaded plague. Mr. Dave Lane, the manager, assures me that this year the herbarium and cacti greenhouses will be out of this world all summer. Also, a rock garden, peat garden and a pond area will be very impressive.
Clyde and Co. A public thoroughfare built on the old St Andrews railway line, which was closed in the 1960s. It passes over the old viaduct, which took the line down to the east of Newport Travelling along the main road which passes through the middle of St Andrews. In a moment we will pass over the Caresco, which winds its way to the centre of the town on its way to the harbour. At the top of the hill on the left is the entrance to the Lane Bray's Woodland Walk, which meanders its way through a very pleasant route with some breathtaking scenery. is the West Port, one of the old entrances to the town. It was built in 1589. The Gibson House on the left is a home for elderly people who have led a sober and industrious life. I hear they have some vacancies at the moment. Just now there is one lady looking forward to your 102nd birthday. We are now heading into the town centre and the street on the left is Hope Street, where you will find a perfect example of Georgian type terraced buildings. The inspiration for these was taken from the new town of Edinburgh around the Charlotte Square area. At the bottom of this street is where Prince William spent his second year. He resided in the top apartment with his security personnel staying in the apartment below. This was to ensure no one breached security, but I think Kate must have slipped under the radar a few times. Coming up on the left is Greyfriars Gardens, which has recently been resurfaced. In stepping the old surface, they unearthed seven skeletons. Geologists said that they were from the 14th century and they were all friars, a type of monk. I think that's why it's called Greyfriars Gardens. We are now travelling along Market Street, where the Lammas Market is held annually in August. It is the oldest surviving medieval market left in Scotland. It used to be a training market, but is now more of a fun fair. I think Market Street is looking very nice since it was recobbled and the fountain refurbished. The wee sweetie shop on the right, Mums, was visited often by Prince William as he had a bit of a sweet to do. The Tourist Information Centre is ahead on the right where you will find friendly staff always willing to help with inquiries. We are now turning into Church Street. This stop is for the town centre. For passengers reported at the beach or bus station, the tour will continue shortly.